not wrong. I think oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't see the three, two, one. You talked about it yesterday. I want to re-talk about because it, it was really good. Okay. I'm going to go shut this door. If we're on live, hi. How are you? <laughs> good morning. We are live. Rick is shutting a door. Uh, Actually, Rick, Rick, Rick went to vote really quick. Now he's coming back. No, I'm joking. <laughs> what, what did I do? What, what did you say? I was telling him you went to go vote outside the door. <laughs> <laughs> went to go vote? Yeah, outside. Yeah, our door. We, well, we used to be a polling place. We aren't anymore. Um. Anyway, thank you for being with us today. Boy, what a great day for us to be online. Amen. Look, the church needs to be in prayer today. I think a lot of people feel anxious and nervous about the kinds of things that are going on today and what's happening. I know we say that no matter who gets in there, God God is in control. I get that. and But uh, do you really believe it? <laughs> Sometimes we just say that to make ourselves yeah. feel better. But God is in control. And whatever happens today, uh, the, the, even 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 the, the the conversations about the riots, so, you know, with that that's what makes me the saddest today. I've been really sad, uh, just to tell you, I've been sad about this election. And what I've been sad about is is all of the the arguments and the fights. And if you go back to Jesus's, if you go back to Jesus's um, prayer in in chapter seventeen of of the Gospel of John. Many times in that prayer, he asked for unity, and Christians Christians can't aren't even unified on this thing, which is which is crazy. Yeah. Whether you're for Trump or Biden or whatever, but look, our first loyalty is to Jesus Christ, and it makes me the saddest that we have Christians who can't can't explore political differences without being angry and upset and mad and so emotionally overtaken by these things you know god asks for us to be unified and i hope that we will i hope that we will be unified in christ first and then you know all those other things they you know god will take care of them um he just will it's it's a very important day people in california i know that i've talked to some people in california who are republicans think well it's just going to be blue anyway here so who cares same in washington where I'm from. It's the same in Washington. It's a blue state. And it's blue in Seattle and it's red everywhere else in Washington. Yeah. You know, and so I think it's probably kind of the same thing here. There's probably a lot of blue in, in LA in that area and there and yeah. all, and then it's kind of red as you get further away towards Arizona and that goes towards you know, but anyway, it's just it's just it's frustrating for people. But look, God has you here and we're gonna see the purpose that He has you here for. Um, whether Trump wins or Trump loses or Biden wins or Biden loses doesn't matter today. I mean, it does because, and you should do your civil duty and you should vote and you should be involved in all of those things because I think it's important for us as Christians that our voice be heard and that's one way it can be heard. But the other issue is, is that we need to be unified in Christ. That's, that's what God calls us to be. He calls us to be unified. Jesus says, Jesus even says, as we are one, talking about him and the Father, that we as Christians are to be one. And so that that that, that means there there was no there's no light between Jesus and the Father. <laughs> they were they were on the same page all the time. Yeah. And so we should be on the same page all no, the I time. I agree with you. The um you know no. the, when it comes to the body of Christ, there's no denomination, there's no yeah, that's right. your theology, my theology. Right. It's what the Bible says. And so the problem is we interpret it differently exactly. and get ourselves into trouble. And that's right? the problem. Yeah. We're part of the body that's Christ is the head, he's the brain, he's the one that controls the body what it's supposed to do. And the very scripture that I was thinking about, um, which says in John seventeen well, yeah. twenty two twenty three, yeah. he prays this, it's like Lord what you have given me I, I have given to them that they may be one, just right. as we are one. Right. I and them, yeah. you and me, and that they be perfected in unity, so that the world may know right. you sent me and love them, right. even as you love me. So right. Right. that's the key. Right. That's, you know, the unity is the key. Unity is the key yeah. by the power of the Spirit. When you say yes to Christ, you, you're no longer your own. And we're going to talk right. about the Holy Spirit today. You have to you have to give yourself over to the control of the Holy Spirit so you don't fulfill your lusts and desires of the flesh, which Paul talks about. And so I'm guilty at times where I get mad and frustrated. But I realize, like, wait a minute, 
I know what I need to do. Give myself over to the control of the spirit. Obey what you, you what just fall in, love just, with follow, just fall in love with Jesus. Just fall in love with Jesus and treat and treat other believers, especially other believers, but really all people. Because Jesus says, "Even love your enemies." So it's it's not like we not like we have one way that we're supposed to treat believers and another way that we're supposed to treat non-believers. There are some we're not supposed to follow non-believers. We're not supposed to let them influence us. But but you know sometimes we're not we're supposed to only be influenced by Christ. That's what we're supposed to be influenced by. And then if I'm influenced by Christ and Uriel is influenced by Christ, then we become unified. Remember, I've said this a lot. You become unified by the way you think. Remember, I've said that a lot. It, and it's the truth. The Bible tells us that. It's by what doctrine you believe. That means the way you think. By what doctrine you believe helps you to understand what your unity is. That's why the church is, who's supposed to be unified, who Jesus prayed for the unification to happen, that's why sometimes it doesn't happen is because we don't see theologically together. And if we don't see theologically okay. together, then we... Then we get upset. Our feelings get involved. And when our feelings get involved, then we can't have a discussion so that our theology can be corrected because we're so emotionally out of sorts. And that's the, the emotion is high. And I say all the time, I say this all the time when I'm doing counseling, when emotion is high, reason is low. I got to get in the right picture here. When emotion is high, reason is low. So we have to bring emotion down so that reason can be can be talked about but we are such in an emotional state right now in our country that we are out of balance and that's that's really what i want to pray for you know if you go if you go online um honestly the, the, um, there are people who have said I'm, I'm not making it up i'm just saying i'm just reporting this to you there are people online who have said if joe biden isn't winning then i want you to write and this is what you do and here, this is where the police stations are and this is where the news reporters are and this is where you're going to get most attention i mean it's all online and it's really sad that's not the way our democracy is supposed to work now i know i'm old i get it but i have never seen this kind of vitriol and hatred in our country before and it and, and it's and you think it's caused by a, a certain party, or you think it's caused, but that's not where it comes from. Now, now Satan is he's working through certain people, and they're on both sides of the aisle. I know I just mentioned a, a but but that's just what's online. You know, you can I, and you can find some of that same stuff with militia groups with Trump as well. I mean, it's on both sides. Is what I'm trying to tell you. So the reality is this. The reality is we're supposed to be unified in Christ. And the, the, this world desperately needs, and that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the orders Christ has given us. This world desperately needs us to be unified in Christ today as believers. And so whether you're a Republican or Democrat or Independent, by the way, I'm an Independent. I don't mind telling you that. I don't care. I've, I've always been Independent. My, 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 the history of my life politically is that my dad was... My dad, for the most of his life, was Democrat. He worked for a Democrat governor's. He was high in in, a, in, in political office and Democrat in a Democrat state. He worked for both Republican and Democrat, but he was Democrat and he pushed Democrat and he pushed it on me and everything else and everyone else. And he was very politically motivated. Well, you know what? I when I became Christian, I began to think for myself and. I chose independent <laughs> because there were some things about the Democrat Party that I didn't think I could I could support. So that was just me personally. Now, and, and and there's some things in the Republican Party I can't support. That's yeah. why I'm independent. So I just have to tell you that. So um, you know, the, but when the, my dad passed away, he honestly he he had a really hard time with some things before he passed away, and he became Republican, which which drew that which was crazy to me. I mean, I. I <laughs> You know, but whatever, you know, that's what he did before he died. But people are switching parties all the time. Even died in the wool Republicans are becoming Democrats and even died in the wool Democrats are becoming Republicans. That's all fine and dandy to talk about. But the real conversation is, are you unified in Christ? Yeah. Are you going to allow the, the Holy Spirit? Because the, Jesus is praying to the Father. So we know it's the will of God. We know that it's what Jesus wants. We know it's what the Father wants. And we know it's what the Holy Spirit has come to make happen. So are we going to allow the Holy Spirit to let us become unified? The, the other yeah. thing that I want to add to like my prayer, 
because of as believers, like like you have said, it's not a battle for power, but it's a battle right. for truth. truth. Amen. Amen. And one of the things I'm huge is the word, the word, the word. What does the word say? And so, the, one of the scriptures, my part would be that. The, where Paul talks about in Romans 12, 1, is I urge you to be present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, you know, to God, which is your spiritual act of service. Then he says in verse 2. Yeah, Romans. To, yeah, Romans. I'm sorry. Romans 12, 2, he says, and do not be conformed to this, this world, be but form, but the renewing of your mind to be right. and be prove the will of God, which is good and acceptable and perfect. And so, when, like you said, when we study the word under the guidance of the Holy Spirit and we read it, <laughs> God, you know, we, we, it's great out of John 17. The Holy Spirit is, is, is the great counselor. We teach you all these things. And so, you know, question when, uh, what, what we talk about, you know, and let the Holy Spirit guide you and direct you according to the word. Like my prayer would be is study the word, show yourself to be approved, look at the word, because sometimes, you know, people, like you said, they look at the word and they... They may misinterpret, you know, certain things what the Bible says about God's love, God's justice, but read the word, examine it for what it says. And, and you, you begin to understand like what Rick talks about is you will see, then you'll see that unification happen within the body that then you'll know what to do, how to act, how to behave. Well, that, that scripture that, that Uriel just read is in Romans 12, 1 and about through verse 4 in there somewhere. And it says, don't be, it says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Well, what does that mean? How, what, what is our mind renewed to? Our mind is renewed to Christ. Yes. It's renewed to the thoughts of Christ. So we're to become like Christ by having our mind renewed to have the mind of Christ. And that's what it's talking about. And so, so for us, again, that, that's just what I've been, that just confirms again, what I've been sharing with, with us today is that we have unity by having a renewed mind, by having the mind of Christ. If you have the mind of Christ, if I have the mind of Christ, if we have the mind of Christ, then we'll be unified. It's the way we think that brings about unity. It's what we believe, what doctrine we hold and so Uriel is right. You should question everything we say, but but come down with uh, come down to what the the message of the scripture is that we're reading. What's the yes. message? And when you find out what that message is, then you align your life to that message. And when you do that, then unity happens. So that's how we're going to have unity in this country. It's not going to be politically driven. It's going to be spiritually driven. And as, as long as we are so separated with the way that we think, some people think it's okay to ride and loot and all that stuff. Some of us think it's not okay. We're never going to be unified with, with conversations that are so far apart. And, and the only person, the only person that's going to be able to unify us is the person of Jesus Christ. Now, if Jesus Christ says it's okay to loot and, and, and steal and all that, okay, then I'll do that. But I don't see that in the Word. I see that you're not supposed to steal. In fact, you know, I mean, I see all kinds of things that say that's wrong in Scripture. So I'm, so that's why I believe what I believe. Look, if I was just going my own selfish way, I'd go with them. I need a new 84-inch TV or whatever it is, too. Why, why not? You know, <laughs> but I, but that's not, you know, that's not what it, that's not what the word says. You know, so I'm just telling you. So I'm selfish enough. I'm, I'm trying not to be in my life, but I'm selfish enough just to tell you that I probably would do some stupid things just like, well, what I think are stupid. I would probably do some of those things as well. And, and I want justice just as much as every other person wants justice on this planet, maybe even more than some. And, and, but the justice that I want is the justice that Christ brings because I'm a Christian. And so everything has to go through the cross of Christ in my life. All my thought processes have to go through the cross of Christ so that I know that those thought processes are the mind of Christ. And I think that's what I, I want to pray for today is that we get to a place in the church. Now, I'm not expecting non-Christians to do this, but, but the reason that the church needs to be about thinking this way is because people, Uriel just read it, People, when they see us unified, then they will say, there must be something about that. God said it would happen. So that's how evangelism takes place. When we're unified with the mind of Christ, 
other people will see that and then the Holy Spirit will use that as a tool to bring them into the fold. That's exactly why unified, a unified body is so important to Jesus Christ. Right? Because then it brings, and that's the tool that the Holy Spirit uses many times to bring Jesus into the fold. So that, especially in a chaotic world, world that we live in today. So yeah, perfect, perfect scriptures that you're reading today. Yeah. Should we pray? Yeah, we should probably pray. Let's do that. It's getting late, so this can't. This yeah. this isn't a political show. So, uh, but, well, we're not making it political. Yeah. It started with the word. So. Yeah, yeah. But I don't want people to think it is. So we should pray. <laughs> Yeah, All right. let's go. Yeah, you want to lead us? Sure. <laughs> sure. Lord, um, we thank you for today. Yes, Lord. Well, we would ask today, Lord, um, it's a great day for our country today because we're voting upon our leader, Lord. And so, Lord, you already know, Lord, as you're the Alpha, you'll make it the beginning and the end. You know all things, Father. Lord, um, as Rick has said, Lord, um, our part, Lord, is to simply to pray, to believe, to be unified by the power of the Spirit as your body. When we said yes to Christ, Lord, we counted the cost. Mm -hmm. And so then at that point, Lord, the Holy Spirit comes in us. And, you know, we're baptized in the body. You know, and, and Lord, our part really is today is as this great day is occurring, Lord, I would ask, Father, for your Holy Spirit just to move throughout, you know, city by city, state by state throughout the country, Lord, for your church. Lord, to be unified together. And we will act according to your will, not our will, Lord. We give up every right that we had. And we said yes to Christ. Mm -hmm. yes. And then as we read your word, Father, you, you know, we as we study it, but under the guidance of your Holy Spirit, and as we search it, Lord, you reward those who seek your truth. Yes, Lord. And so we would ask, Lord, today that we do that. We pray, Lord, for us. You know, I'm exhausted. Lord. I'm, like, I'm tired today. But, Lord, uh, I pray for renewal of your, of, of your spirit in me. And for Rick, as we share your word, and for those that are today, Lord, are, are just tired or frustrated, whatever feelings they may have. Lord, I would pray that they just be obedient to your truth. Help us to be unified, Lord, and that the world may see, you know, what makes us different. And it's because of Christ that lives in us that we are, we are making a decision, Lord, moment by moment to have the mind of Christ. So I pray today, Lord, um, I pray specifically for our church, for individuals that are just going through a hardship. I know the shoulder families. Yes, Jesus. Lord, that would you comfort uh, Diana and her and her kids. Yes, Jesus. Lord, as uh, Gary has passed away, please, yes, Father, continue Jesus. to minister to them and for us as a church here at Las Palmas to minister to them. Yes, Lord, we continue to pray for Ed, Lord, for his health. As uh, the, the, He would be better, Lord. I think of other individuals in the church that are running by name that are just working that are struggling physically. But Lord, I, I pray above all for our soul. Mm -hmm. I pray for that, Lord. Lord, your word says outwardly we, we are wasting weight, but inside we are, being, we are being renewed day by day, Father. It is that our, we need to have that connection with you by the part of your spirit, our spirit with your spirit, Lord. And strengthen that today, Lord. Strengthen our soul, Lord, that we can live moment by moment in you and to trust you that Today it's going to be okay as we trust you, Lord. And I would pray, Lord, for the individuals that who do not know you, or maybe who know you, that are maybe uh, I don't know that's going through their head that they can do particular selfish acts, Father, like riots or looting, whatever it is, Lord. We ask you, Father, that you would, those that are in in power in every city, Lord, that you give them uh, the make the right decisions to deal with all of that, Father. And and I pray for the word today out of Acts one that we're going to. Uh, learn and excited father for us just to uh, uh, share and explain under the guidance of your spirit and i pray this in the name of jesus father thank you father for today we thank you for our uh, our our election today lord we pray that things would go well that you would uh, place protection upon all those falling places today where people yes, are that your holy spirit would fall there lord god and that you would be the spirit of truth in those places we pray, pray lord jesus that that you would keep people safe today. We pray, Lord, that there would be um, no acts of violence that would occur in any of those places, that people would be absolutely safe as they stand in those long lines to, to vote in certain, in certain uh, states today. Lord, we pray that you would minister to those people. Thank you, Father, for taking care of this election. Thank you, Father, for, for bringing about the results that you want to bring about for the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ, not even the furtherance of our country. So often, Lord God, we get so 
concerned about how well our country's doing, and we forget the cha the challenge and the charge that we've been given that it's your king your kingdom that we're supposed to be pushing forward, not the kingdom of the United States. We do pray with great thanksgiving that we were born here, that we live here. Some of us immigrated here, Lord God, and, we, and we're here. We thank you that we're here. We thank you that we have the privileges of this country. And we do, Lord God, want to pray for our country. We do want to pray for our president. We do want to pray for our senators and our congressmen and women. We do want to pray, Lord Jesus, for, for the people who are in control of our states and our cities and our counties. We do ask, Father, for your Holy Spirit's wisdom on them. We do pray, Father, for uh, for things to take place today that would be um, very positive, Lord God. And, and may, they may not seem positive now, Lord, but we pray that you would take everything that Satan means for evil and you would turn it into good. We pray that, Father, for our country. And you say that you're going to bless the country that blesses Israel. And I know this country blesses Israel and we bless Israel today. And we thank you for Israel. And we thank you, Father, for you choosing Israel as your government, as your nation of people. And we just thank you, God, for ministering to them today. We ask that, that we would be blessed because we truly want to bless them. And we don't want to bless them just to receive your blessing. We want to bless them because you've commanded it. Help us, Lord God, today to understand this conversation of command. We ask that it transform our lives. We ask that you would bring unity to Christians, to the body of Christ, the true body of Christ. Lord, let her be unified. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Let your prayer, Lord God, be answered in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for today. Thank you for those who would need um, your comfort today. I, too, pray for um, those who have lost loved ones today, Lord Jesus. I thank you for Diana and ask that you administer to her as she lost her husband, and for the rest of the family, for Fred and everyone else, Lord, I just pray for a special ministry on them, a ministry of care and comfort, and and, and just, you would just take care of them in every way. Thank you, Lord God, for taking care of that family. Uh, we love you today, Lord Jesus, and we just ask that you would transform our lives through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, one good, really positive thing that I want to tell you is that, you know what, we're going to meet here on Sunday morning at yes. 9.33. <laughs> it was, we had a very, I don't know if you got to be with us uh, Sunday or not, but if uh, if you're listening to us today and you were uh, there on Sunday, thank you so much for coming to meet with us. I thought we, I thought it was a great Sunday. I thought we had a great time. We're going to continue to do that at 9.33 um, this next Sunday on the 7th. Is it the 7th or the 8th? The 8th, I think. The 8th of November. 8th. So, yeah, so you come and hang out with us and be with us at 9.33. There will be shade. and But you may not want to sit in the shade. It's going to be week. cold. Because it's supposed <laughs> to be 65 to 70 degrees in there. Yeah, in the morning? It, yeah. It, well, it, well, probably that's the high of the day. So it's going to be a little chilly. So guess what? You get to wear your... It, 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 <laughs> You get to wear your scarves and your boots and your coats that you never get to wear. So come to church, bring those, put them in the car just in case you might need them while you're here. Anyway, <laughs> it used to be, it used to make it make me laugh when I first moved here because I'm from Seattle area, right? So so I, I get down here and and it, it's like 70 degrees and I see people wearing parkas and boots and scarves and they're all because you're not a desert. I rat. know, I know. <laughs> And it's like I was, laughing, I was laughing, going, man, this is shorts weather where I'm from. <laughs> I'm the opposite of him. When, I, when he gets under 60, I don't like anything under 60. <laughs> no, we're trapped. We're, we're running around in the snow with our shorts on. And, and we come down here, and it's like, my goodness. And, and, you know, I thought, these people are going to be dying hot, but they're not. So anyway, that was that used to make me laugh. Still does a little bit. <laughs> I'm, but my body is getting more acclimated, that's for oh. sure, to, to everything down here. So that's good. So anyway, let's go back, if you would, with me, please, to verse 4 of chapter 1. Because there's one thing there, before we move on, that I wanted to talk about today. Uh, it is, on one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. That word command is important. And I wanna, I, I, we know what the command is. The command is the Great Commission. But um, I want to talk about this this concept of command and orders. He, it's 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 really he gave them this order. Let me see if I can find the right page here that I'm supposed to be on. I thought it was on it, but I might not be. Um, anyway, he gave them a command. This is no, it's right here. Okay, uh, this was Jesus's um, objective. This I want to read this to you. This was Jesus's objective 
with the apostles during the 40 days after his resurrection. So remember, we talked about the 40 days between the resurrection and the ascension. His objective was to not only fulfill this command that he gives, but to make sure that the church, which you are the church, it's not just you, it's those, I mean, not just them, it's all of us. We have been given this command, okay? And it's it, it's a command, it's an order. It's it's like from the general to the private. It's like, yeah, yeah. you just do it. It's, you don't have this, an option. This is what you're <laughs> supposed to do, okay? So this was Jesus' objective with the apostles during the 40 days after his resurrection. Um, these men never went to seminary, but they received an education unlike anyone in history of the world. They received their education straight from the master, the teacher himself, uh, and they were given from the teacher himself these orders. Um, and they were, they were the Great Commission. Now you can find the Great Commission in Matthew 28, Mark 16, Luke 24. It's in all the Synoptic Gospels. And this is what it says. And behold, I am sending forth the promise of my Father upon you, but you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power, the Holy Spirit from on high. We talked about that yesterday. That's in Luke 24, 49. You, you will receive power to fulfill this order, is what he's saying. So I, I want you to get this. You have an order, and you have an order from God. And it's an order that really that really needs to um, be fulfilled. It, that This is what we've been left on earth to do. This is why once you become a Christian, you're not taken directly, and there's not a personal uh, rapture into heaven. <laughs> this is why you're still here, because you have something to fulfill. God has a plan for you, and the plan is this. The plan is, this is his command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. So his order was, remember, to don't, no, do not leave Jerusalem. I want you to stay in Jerusalem. I want you to wait for the gift. And we talked about where it was in Luke 24, 47. I want you to know my order is for you to stay here until you receive the gift that God has for you. That gift is important. You can't do what I've told you to do. You can't do the Great Commission without that gift. You need to understand that you have to have the gift of the Holy Spirit, okay? The commandment um, alluded, alluded to here um, refers to a call to a mission that these chosen apostles should lead. They have a mission. They're supposed to fulfill it. The mission represents the next phase. Now, this is important. The mission represents the next phase in God's work. It's the next phase and takes place in the fulfillment of scripture about Christ, as in Luke 24, 47. Again, Jesus says, I want you to stay in one place. Okay, so he chose apostles. These apostles were not self-appointed, right? It's He chose them. They were, they're not even volunteers. They didn't volunteer to be with Jesus. You remember throughout the gospel, we saw that Jesus chose these people, yeah. right? He, he chose them. them on purpose, he picked them. But uh, but were uh, they were a sovereign chosen people by Christ, and they were subject to His authority. That's why He didn't ask for volunteers. He didn't say, "Who wants to follow me?" He said, "Come follow me." You both, now you have aligned yourself with me, and once you've aligned yourself with me, you are subject to my authority. That's important to understand. Can I share a verse? Right? Yeah, sure. And. He says this back to 16 when he talks about the Holy Spirit. 16 what? 16 verses 13. Of what? Book of John. John, okay. John 16, 13 through uh -huh. 14. He says, but when he comes, being the Holy Spirit, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will disclose to you what is to come. And he will glorify mm -hmm. me, for he will, take, he will take of mine, and he will disclose it to you, all the things right. that the Father has, that Father has, are mine. Therefore, I said that He takes of mine and will disclose it to you. Right. So, uh, let's let's come back. Hold on to that. We'll come All back right. to that conversation. Okay. So these are these are these are appointed leaders. Okay. They're they're chosen by God, just like you are chosen. Now, that's one of the reasons why you need to realize that that we are all chosen. We have, a, we have a choice to say yes or no. 
Look, let me give you an idea. Let me give you an understanding of this. Remember the rich young ruler? When yeah. the rich young ruler came to him, and he said, and the rich young ruler said, what? Well, I've done everything. I've done all the commandments. I've, I've done everything I'm supposed to do. And Jesus said, go sell your stuff and follow me. And the guy said he couldn't do it. But what did Jesus say anyway? He said, come follow me. Yeah. Jesus chose him, but the man chose not to follow his choosing. So when you choose, when you say yes to the choosing of Christ in your life, through the Holy Spirit, then you are a bond servant. And I want you to get that. We'll get we'll get to that in a second. Yep. That's really good. Thank you for that. Let's see. The name they were give the name they gave themselves is bond servants. Um, okay, it's doulos from this from the word slave, and they are they are self bonding servants. Bond servant is I choose to bind myself as a servant to you. So that's the name that they gave themselves. Second uh, Peter one one, Romans one one, James one one. Paul says, I'm a bond servant of Jesus Christ. I choose to bond myself, Jesus, as his servant. So that's what we're supposed to be when we become believers. Yep. We are chosen people. We are men and women who surrender wholly ourselves to the Lord and to his will and to his life. My whole life belongs to Christ. See, he chose the disciples. The disciples said yes to follow him. They became the bondservant of Christ. And now he is the authority in their life, which goes back to what we talked about earlier about yeah. being unified, right? We're unified because why? We think the, we have the mind of Christ, Christ and he leads us. He leads us. So we are witnesses and we have been given our orders and God wants to see us fulfill those orders by the Holy Spirit. That's where that's where what Uriel just did, just read is is really important. And that's John 16, right? Yep. Now watch this. Let me read it in a different version. I think this is really good. I think this is great. What verse did you start with? Um. Thirteen. Yeah. Good. Through fifteen. Okay, I'll go to twelve. <laughs> hey, you're doing my number. <laughs> I did that just for you. Verse 12. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, who's he? The spirit of truth, capital S, spirit of what? Truth. Not the spirit of anything else, but the spirit of truth comes. He will guide you into all the truth. So that's what the Holy Spirit does. He guides us into all truth. Political truth is a part of all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he receives what he will make known to you. So, so did you catch that? What, how's that going to happen, Nero? What's, what's the process there? I'm sorry, I was in a different thought. I was thinking, oh, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm thinking okay. ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. No, that's okay. He does this all the time. He does this all the time. <laughs> So I'm used to it. It's fine. I'm sorry. No, no, you're doing great. Keep doing it. That's why we love you. He's always like 15 steps ahead. Okay, he will glorify me. Why? Why is he going to glorify Jesus? Because this is Jesus speaking. Who's going to glorify him? The Holy Spirit. He will glorify me because it is from me, it's from Jesus, that the Holy Spirit will receive what the Holy Spirit will make known to us. That's what he's saying. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. So but that's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit comes, and, and, and Uriel is perfectly right to read that scripture. It's, it's, it's right on point. The, the reality is this, that the Holy Spirit comes to us. He teaches us what the, what the Father and the Son have ta taught him to teach to us because it's really, it's really not that... The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit is God himself. The Holy Spirit is omniscient. So the Spirit and the Son and the Father will not say anything that contradicts each other because they're the same person. One person, three manifestations. So what we have here is we have the Holy Spirit coming to us and giving us the truth of Christ for what reason? To fulfill what we're supposed to fulfill. That's why Jesus gave this order. So what you did today with that is perfect. It says this, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised. What's the gift? The Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, right? <laughs> right. Which you have heard from me speak about. 
So he's heard him. I mean, right? We just we just shared with you what Jesus spoke about the Holy Spirit. So he says, you've heard me tell you about, and Jesus spoke a lot more of the Holy Spirit, but at least that part. He said, you've heard from me. You've heard what I've told you about the Holy Spirit. So so you've heard me speak about it. Now, this is, this is five. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. We talked about that yesterday. It's really important for us to understand that. You will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. How were they baptized? They were baptized how? They were baptized with the Holy Spirit. They weren't baptized with water. If you've been baptized with water, great. That's a baptism of repentance. When you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, it's a baptism of power. It's a baptism of authority. It's a baptism that you've been given. The Holy Spirit will come and live in you. That happens when you become a Christian. And so when you first become a Christian, you have authority and power of God in your life to do what? Not to do everything. You don't have ultimate authority. No. <laughs> but you have the authority to do what he's commanded you to do, what he's ordered you to do. And what has he ordered you? What is? What did we read here that he ordered you to do? To fulfill the Great Commission, to go in all the world, to be unified. He ordered us to be unified. And then on a side note, that prior to 16 and 14, like when I first... John 14. John 14, sorry, I'm sorry. Down. You know, I was afraid. Like, what do I say? How do I do this? Right? Right. He says this in, in, in John 14... 26, which some of us know well, but the helper of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he would teach you all things and bring yeah. to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. And then right after that, it says, my peace I leave with you, yeah. my peace I give unto you, not the peace of the world give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, yeah. neither let it be afraid. So John 14, 26 is a perfect scripture. I will teach you all things and bring all yes. things to your remembrance. John 14, 27, my peace I leave with you. This is a wonderful conversation. You will have the peace of Christ when he teaches you all truth puts all things in your spirit so that you go out there, you might feel anxious, but your spirit will be at peace yep. and then you can fulfill what God's called you to fulfill. You can you can do you can manifest the order, you can do the order that he told you to do, the order that he gave you to do. You can fulfill it. And you're yeah. gonna see this later in Acts. That's what Acts is all about. Yeah the you whole can, book. You can see the whole book, you can see these particular men even after the during the forty days, remember we talked about uh, Christ kind of uh, rebuked them and correct them, like, and then He's given them, or you can receive the Spirit. So, so, so back up a bit. Christ rebuked them, and tell me what you're thinking. About. I mean, th their disbelief, like they had a hard time believing when, before this, before this, time? before this, right? Yeah, okay, okay, yeah, before yeah, yeah. this, yeah, yeah. They had a hard oh, time. Oh, I know what you're saying. Okay, during yeah. the 40 days, and Christ it. had to reveal himself to show them. Well, in the beginning of the 40 days, yes. some of them didn't even believe he had risen yes. from the grave, right? Yes. They didn't believe in the resurrection. And so, and so they were weak and anemic with no authority and yes. no power. And then after they received the gift from the Holy Spirit from on high, they 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 completely changed in those areas, and that's what you're talking about. Yes. Okay. Perfect. And that's where you can yeah. see even Good. Peter yeah. has a boldness. Yes. To share. And and and, and, and in Acts two, you get that. You see <laughs> you that. All that. You see that complete change in Peter in yes. Acts two. Yes. And yeah, it's yeah. no different. Yes, for them and for us, it's the same right. thing. You know. So, <laughs> right. So we're in Acts one six. We're gonna get to Acts two, but yes. we're, 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 <laughs> He's like a racehorse, man. He wants to get out of the gate. He and Billy both do that. I'm, I'm always, <laughs> they're so much alike that way. That's fun. Thank you, though. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, verse 6. So listen, baptized with the Holy Spirit. Baptized with the Holy Spirit means that the Holy Spirit is initiated into you or put into you, and you're put into the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is put into you, you become the temple of God. Doesn't the Bible say that? Mm -hmm. You are the temple of God. You, the, you are the body of the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit lives in us. Now, the Holy Spirit doesn't make us robots. We have to yield to his influence in our life. That's the problem. That's where we get it, the problem. Yep. That's the problem. That's what. That's where things go wrong. <laughs> is when we don't yield to the Holy Spirit, but like today we yield to political pressure, or or we yield to what's politically correct, or we yield to some other person's religious thought or philosophy because we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. 
Uh, time out. The only yielding that you're supposed to do is yield to the Holy Spirit. And if you yield to the Holy Spirit, sometimes you will be not mean, but like, look at Jesus said, I didn't say one thing that the Father didn't tell me to say, yeah. right? And what did he say to Peter? He said, get behind me, Satan. Whoa. I mean, that doesn't sound politically correct. That doesn't sound like a nice guy, all fluffy and He's not fluffy. full of kindnesses <laughs> all the time. He says that you're going to be kind, but it is kind. Think about this. It doesn't sound kind, but it is kind. Why? Because it's the truth. Yes. And Jesus said it in love to Peter. He loved Peter. Yes. And, he, and he said, Peter, listen, what you're doing, what you're saying is motivated by Satan. It's not motivated by God. So you need to check that. That's what he's saying. We don't know exactly how it came across to Peter, but God knew the best way to communicate that to Peter. And the way we read it in Scripture is, get behind me, Satan. Stop. Stop that. You can't do that anymore. Stop. That's what he's saying. So in order to have that kind of wisdom, to know when to use those kind of terminologies, and in order to know when to, to be a little more forceful and when not to be forceful, you have to have the wisdom of the Spirit of God which is part of the baptism of the Spirit in your life. So that's what happens, all right? But watch this, and watch these disciples. They're still kind of, they're yeah. still kind of, they're not catching up with Jesus yet, well, right? They have their, they're still yeah. haven't done the order. Well, well, still well, but think, yeah, that's it, right? What do they think? They, they have, they don't have the mind of Christ. Watch. They have the mind of religion. Watch. I mean, watch this. All their lives, what have they been taught? That, that Jesus is going to come, the Messiah is going to come, and the Messiah is going to overrule and set up an earthly kingdom right away, and yeah. he's going to take care of, and the Jews are going to rule the world with the Messiah, and they've been taught that in every generation there is a Messiah born, but most, but the, the, he only really becomes the Messiah when he takes his place as the Messiah. Yeah. So that's why they haven't had a, a messianic a messianic kingdom yet because there's no one that's really had the courage to take up their messianic call that's what they believe so watch they believe that jesus because he's raised from the dead now they believe that but they believe because he's raised from the dead they still have that old testament conversation in their spirit their heart their mind they have it in their mind that says he's going to set up an earthly kingdom take care of rome and they're going to rule the world yeah you said it very key like yeah. That's what religion does. Like religion <laughs> just makes you, you know, so, I don't like tunnel vision. Well, it doesn't let you go out the back. Yeah. You're stuck yes. in a box. You're stuck, You're stuck in, in a box. box. Yeah. You have yeah. to get outside of the box because they knew this as kids. They were they studied yeah. the Old Testament and the scripture. So they knew. That's all the kids. scripture they had. Yeah, That's right. all they had. Yeah. And so Christ comes and they're like, well, wait a minute. You know, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, this is not like what we've been taught. Yes. So they have to. So, reality, how do they become unified? By having the mind of Christ. How do they have the mind of Christ? Watch. They have the mind of Christ by being baptized by the Holy Spirit and yielding to the Holy Spirit's teaching the truth to them in their life. Remember, I said unity comes by the way you think. It's a perfect example. Watch. Then they gathered around him. So he said, look, this is what I want you to do. He said, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So they go, okay, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach, is what they saw the Holy Spirit as in the Old Testament. The Holy Spirit comes and goes like the wind. Ruach means wind. The Holy Spirit would come and go like the wind. So they had that concept in their mind. That was their Old Testament concept. So they had a concept of a of an earthly kingdom, and they had the concept of the Holy Spirit coming and going. That's what they had. Neither one of those would be the right understanding. Watch this. So they gathered around because they didn't quite get it. Okay, they had a different idea yep. in mind. So they gathered <laughs> around him and asked him, "Lord, are you at this time?" Going to restore the kingdom of Israel. Ah, we're not really sure what you're doing here, Jesus. Are you going to set up your earthly kingdom? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates 
the Father has set by his own authority. So look, he's saying, it does, my earthly kingdom doesn't really matter at this point. It's not for you to know when it is. What is he saying? You'll know when it happens. Don't concern yourself with all this stuff. That's what he's saying. Because you have a job to do, and you can't do it if you're so wrapped up with things that yeah. that don't matter at this point. They matter, but not right now. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. What are you going to say? So I, I was coming to agree with you because what Christ says, he's very specific. The Bible yes. is very specific yeah. for us to follow. What happens is, like what Rick talks about, is when we allow religion to get in the way or our flesh to get in the way, it distorts us from following the truth. We get distracted, whatever it may be. You know, We all have distractions. But all that matters is listen to the Holy Spirit that lives in you. He wants to unify the body of believers to fulfill that great commission. And sometimes I do that. You know, right. I'll run ahead and I realize, like, wait, wait a minute. God is very specific what I'm called to do. And sometimes, you know, these guys, Christ told them specifically, not many days from now, I'm giving you a command. He's so specific. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go stay in Jerusalem <laughs> yes, until hey. you've been with until you've been clothed with power from on high. Until you have the gift that God put, just go do that, yeah. and and <laughs> and fine. then then you can fulfill the great commission. But don't even go fulfill, don't even do the great commission yet. Yeah. Don't start telling people about me. Go do that. Go to Jerusalem and stay there and wait. And you're right; he's very specific. And but then he says, "You guys are concerned about my earthly kingdom. Don't be." He says, "Watch the Father has set by His own authority the time and the dates." So let God be God. Just back up a bit and just do the one thing that you've been asked to do. Go wait. Go wait. But you will receive power. Now see, this is the idea. Watch this. Jesus tells him exactly, going back to your specific conversation, this is red letter, this is Jesus speaking, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. That's the Great Commission. But there's a sequence of, of, of events that takes place. You go wait. Don't worry about anything else. Don't worry about when the kingdom's going to get set up. Don't worry about all this stuff. Just wait for this one thing. Wait for the gift of God. When you receive this gift, you'll know it because you'll receive power. You'll know it. You'll know that you have the power of Christ. But when you receive, and they, by the way, they did this by faith, right? This didn't come any other way except by faith. Just like your salvation comes, the filling, the, the, the baptism filling of the Holy Spirit are two different things, but they come too by faith, okay? When I become a Christian, the Holy Spirit comes on me. But by faith, the Holy Spirit then fills me and I recognize that power. Now watch this. But verse 8 again. This is a really important verse. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in, Ju in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. That's what's going to happen to you. The sequence is wait, be Receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Once you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, you will become my witnesses. You will fulfill my orders. You will do what I've commanded. You are my bond servants. You have chosen to follow me. You will become like me in a lot of ways by having my mind. You won't be Christ. You won't be, you won't be divine. But you will be like me in many ways. Yep. You will be like me, not me, but like me. You will have the mind of Christ because the Holy Spirit will come and he will lead you into all truth. We read it earlier. Uriel did a great bringing that scripture in. So this is this is wonderful conversation. This is yeah, a wonderful love, conversation. There's a lot of rich meat in these verses. Oh man, this <laughs> is this is amazing. Yeah, the, the power is the very thing that you said, you know, you you receive it, it you you inherit it. Uh, that verse, that Greek word talks about it talks about performing miracles, moral power, excellence of the soul, the power of influence which belongs to riches and wealth. So there's different forms of power that it talks about, but it's like you receive what Christ was able to do. You, you go ahead. You no, know, go ahead. You're doing fine. 
no, that's what you do the very same things that he said that you will do because you remember he talked about John the Baptist but greater are those that come after John the Baptist because they will receive the Holy Spirit yeah let's go back to receive power because Uriel touched on that a bit what does it mean that we, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you what does that mean it means it literally means that you'll be able to do the things Jesus did and and he Jesus says that you'll even do greater things than I did um, that's a pretty and I didn't say that Jesus said that that's a pretty amazing statement if you think about it it's powerful <laughs> because what did Jesus do not only before he was resurrected but he laid his body down and he raised it up in the resurrection. After the resurrection, he continued to do the same things that he did before the resurrection. He continued to teach them about the kingdom. See, that's, so why is he teaching them about the kingdom? Well, right here, he's teaching them about the beginning of his kingdom. The beginning of his kingdom is a kingdom on earth where Jesus is ascended to the Father and the servants, his bond servants, his citizens, the king, the, the kingdom citizens, they do the work that Christ would have done while he's here. That's our job. Those are the orders that have been given to us. So he sets up this conversation about the kingdom. The only way you can accomplish that is to receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. It's the only way that you can pray for somebody and the, the authority has been given to you. It says here, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And what will you do? You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria. And in How has Jesus been a witness to those places so far? You're gonna and, and again in the Old Testament in, in the Gospels it says you'll do what I've been doing and greater things. So how has he been doing that? He's been doing that by praying for people and having them having them become healed and well. Now, I know that that's a tough sell. I know that we say, well, wait a minute, I couldn't do that. Well, you're right. It's not you. It's the Holy Spirit's power in you, but you're the vehicle. You're the, you're the tool that God is using to accomplish those things. So that's when I say, when I tell you, you know what, it, we should have the waking, we should wake the sleeping giant. Well, who's the sleeping giant? Now think about this. If you're the church, if you're a believer in Christ, if you if you know that the Holy Spirit comes and, and, and rests upon you. Now, you can think of this in two different ways. There's two kinds of understandings about that, how this happens. Some people think that baptism happens when, when, when you're saved. That's what I think. Some people think it's a second work of grace. I think the filling is the second work of grace. It doesn't really matter. If you're one of these people that's a Christian right now, and you're saying, well, pastor, I don't have any power. Well, pray for it. Go. What did these guys do? They went and they waited and they were there until they received the gift. So if you think you need to receive a gift, I, you know what? I don't care if I'm wrong about how this happens. I just want it to happen. So what I want you to do is I want you to go and I want you to stay in your closet for, for whatever. And it, it should be instantaneous, honestly, because but it's through faith. Yeah. You should go into your closet. In fact, we could do it right now. And you should just pray, Lord, give me the gift of the Holy Spirit. If I don't understand it, if I already have the gift of the Holy Spirit, thank you for it. If I need to have it, please give it to me because I, I am committing myself right now. This is what you should pray. I'm committing myself right now to be your bond servant and to fulfill the orders that you gave me to fulfill. And I'm asking right now, Lord Jesus, that you give me the same kind of power to do your ministry, not for my own self, for my own selfish ways. Forgive me for anything like that, Lord. I pray that you would give me your power to have your mind and to do what you call me to do. And I pray, Father, that I would be a witness in all the world through Jesus Christ, through the power and the gift of his Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. That's what you should pray. And you should believe that happened. I believe it happened. Mm -hmm. I believe it happened. Because it says right here. Now watch. Now watch. Right after that, that, that goes up to verse 9. So right after that, it says, after he said this, I mean, just right after he said that, watch this. He was 
taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid, hid him from their sight. So this is not the last time that Jesus, this isn't, this isn't where they were, this isn't where Jesus was ascended. This just happened when he was with them. He came into the room with them. He told them this stuff and he ascended. He was taken from their very eyes. After this, after he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going when suddenly, ah, now here's the ascension right here. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside him. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Wow. So here is the ascension here. Verse 10. Okay, he was taken up into the sky. Then, then they then they saw two. Now this ascension is described differently in Matthew and differently in other places. Uh, Matthew sixteen twenty seven, John twenty twelve, is are other places where this is where you can read about this. But this is what happened. The ascension took place. Why is the ascension important? We got four minutes for the ascension. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to cover it for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Do, do you have an idea of why you think it might be important, the ascension? Well, the Holy Spirit had to be released. The Holy Spirit had to come upon them. Well, that, yeah, perfect, because he did say to them, right, I have to go away okay, in, order for, in order for me to send the Spirit. So that's one thing. That's perfect. The, the, I think the reason that the ascension is so important for the church is this, that there had to be, when he was with the disciples, he was with, I don't know how many people were there when this happened, but there had to be a time period when they could fix, that they could fix so they could say, he told us this was going to take place and it happened. I believe that's what's going on here. He told them that he was going to do this. He told them that he was going to be with the Father. He told them that these things were going to happen. And so for him to fulfill what he said, they had to watch this happen. And then there needed to be an announcement about it. Just like he left, he's going to come back. And so he's going to give him a sneak preview. Yeah, he's yeah, going to come back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, then take care of his room. <laughs> but there, but there is there's the resurrection, and there's the ascension. Now that took forty days. Ten days later is when Pentecost was. This Penta is five. That's fifty days. Forty days. This he was on Earth for forty days. Ten days later is when Pentecost happened. And that's what you're going to see as we continue to go through this. You're going to see that this conversation begins to be, begins to become real in their life because they're waiting and they're praying and they're asking God and they're waiting for this wonderful, wonderful Pentecost, this, this, this outpouring of the Holy Spirit to come upon them. It happens at Pentecost. It happens at Pentecost. And, and it happens at Pentecost for a reason. The reason it happens at Pentecost is because all these people will be in Jerusalem. They're going to be gathered there. They're going to be waiting for some, you know, they're all on their pilgrimage to Jerusalem so that there will be people from all over the known world there. Yeah. So when, when the Holy Spirit comes and when things take place, people from all over the known world are going to find it and see it and understand it. And they're going to take that conversation back to their... It's, so it's an evangelism conversation. It's, it, it fits yeah. great with the yeah. witness part that you're yes. talking yes. about. Yes. Because as a witness, you know, we're called to share the truth about Jesus Christ. Right. right. And here these men are going to be placed in a position that they could not do on their own. No, no. And they have to receive the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to be witnesses of Christ to proclaim this and you're going to see when we read later of the what the holy spirit does in that group of people that right. come from around the world it's it's a great unique situation right. that occurs right. right uh well this is a, there's a lot of meat in here a lot of conversation in here for us to have <laughs> but it's but it's it's very basic christianity it's christianity 101 it's not it's not in-depth christianity it's just 
101. Remember yesterday we read about um, Mr. Ramsey, our buddy Mr. Ramsey, who passed away in 1939. Excuse me. And what Mr. Ramsey was doing, William Mitchell Ramsey. Remember, he was an archaeologist. He was born in, in 1851. He died in 1939. Remember, we talked about him, if you were with us yesterday. What we talked about is he tried to disprove all of this with archaeological digs for 15 years. It was a brilliant man. From He went to some of the best the best colleges and universities in Scotland. He was in Ox University of Aberdeen, uh, and in Scotland he was in Oxford, um, in, in the, Oxford University in England. He went and did all. He did. He was a brilliant man. He mm. was the best of the day, and he tried to disprove all of this. But what happened with him? He was an atheist. For 15 years, he did archaeological digs around the site that this all took place, and what he discovered when he wrote his much anticipated papers and books what he said was it's all true it's all true it all happened what i've discovered what i've discovered proves this to be correct so today i want you to know that god is doing a great thing in your life he wants to put the holy spirit in your life he wants you to fulfill the orders that he gave he wants you to be what he's called you to be you're his favorite and he's sending you on a great mission. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.